The following is an address to the nation by Dr. the Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, Prime Minister and Minister for Public Administration, Home Affairs, National Security, Youth Development, Disaster Management, and ICT. Ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, patriots all, Grenada continues its economic recovery at what we hope is the tail end of the COVID-19 pandemic, but which now is being threatened by the cold winds of war from the East. Russia's war in Ukraine has not only upended the world order, but has ushered in a new era of uncertainty amidst the specter of a conflict with potential to widen. There are serious global economic consequences for all of us. Inflationary pressures that were already rising even before the first rockets had landed, largely because of a world supply chain challenge will only get worse in the immediate period. Sisters and brothers, these are turbulent times for the world energy markets. And the rise in fuel prices will have an impact everywhere and on everyone. We made a commitment to cap the price of gas to local consumers at $15 a gallon, and that remains in place for now. It means, however, that government will have to sacrifice more in providing this subsidy, thereby limiting our ability to spend elsewhere. The Ministry of Finance is currently undertaking an extensive review of the country's fiscal situation. In the coming weeks, as the true impact of the situation becomes much clearer, we will make further announcements with respect to fuel prices. Sisters and brothers, the cost of fuel impact impacts all aspects of global economic life and will put pressure on every area. The cost of imported manufactured products and other raw materials will rise further. Global investments and tourism will be undermined adding another blow to our attempts to come out of the period of stunted growth, which according to the International Monetary Fund was recorded at 5.6% in 2021. Sisters and brothers, let us not forget personal responsibility in all of this. We must conserve where possible. Let us seek also local alternatives. In every crisis, there are opportunities. This could well be our opportunity to further increase local production and consumption. The pandemic has had a positive impact on encouraging people to return to the land. And we had the welcome sight of fresh local produce on sale at many more locations across the country. Sometimes as simple as a makeshift stand as I've seen on the roadside in many parts of our country. In spite of the challenges, we had economic growth last year and are still confident that there will be more growth this year though this will be tempered by the latest developments. As I speak, 
areas of national economy remain encouraging. There is still buoyancy in the construction sector. The agricultural sector is coming back nicely. And the education sector should return to pre-pandemic levels this year. The tourism industry is bouncing back. And in the short to medium term, we are expecting further increases in visitor arrivals. Thankfully, we are getting ready to open our arms to an army, the Bami Army. The English cricket supporters who will be here this month for the third cricket test between their team and the West Indies at the Grenada National St Cricket Stadium. While there is very good reason, sisters and brothers, to be cautious and even to be concerned, we remain hopeful. As has happened in the last two years, this emerging period calls for experience and steady leadership. And we pledge to continue to provide that tried and trusted leadership to the people of Grenada, Karakou, and P.T. Martinic. With solid leadership in place, we are confident that we can successfully navigate this new global crisis. We are determined to continue to fashion policies that will provide a buffer, especially for the most vulnerable who will be battered by the economic storm brewing on the horizon. We have a team of national and economic planners working over time. And with the resilience we have shown through the years, we are extremely confident that we can face any new challenges head on. Government therefore remains committed to the measures we announced in the 2022 budget to help safeguard people's lives and their livelihoods. We are even looking at some other sectors to expand the assistance, understanding that in challenging global times, many of our people will need our direct help now more than ever. We cannot guarantee it will be easy, but we can take our history of steady leadership to the bank, particularly in times of crisis under this government. Rest assured that this government will not abandon its people. And we are confident that the people won't abandon this government. Grenada has joined the list of countries condemning the war in Ukraine. During the recent summit, CARICOM reiterated its principal policy on this basic matter. We believe that whatever the grievances are among nations, it does not justify the violation of sovereignty of Ukraine or any country. We have seen a worrying trend in the last few years in which large, powerful nations are increasingly abandoning the concept of multilateralism. Without this multilateralism, the world order will be upended. Wars and conflicts will increase. And small nations like ours, already grappling with the effects of such things as climate change, will be crushed. My friends all, I appeal to you to pray for the people of Ukraine. And indeed for the people of Russia and neighboring countries who are directly affected by the horrors of this war. 
innocent women and children, mothers in maternity wards, children in classes and ordinary people just trying to find the way. Unfortunately, the collateral damage of this unnecessary war. I have been advised by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that no Grenadian are in harm's way at this time. And for that, we are very thankful. There are a few students in Russia who have reported that they are safe and there is no need to be evacuated at this time. Should the need arise, this government stands ready to offer any assistance that they may need. Sisters and brothers, while the world may be even understandably has focused on the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war, today there were bombs and missiles being dropped elsewhere like in Yemen and Syria. This new world order that we have been promised has turned into a new era of disorder at home. A new disorder could emerge unless we can muster a national conscience for joint action. Indeed, there is a worrying trend we have been witnessing lately with respect to violence particularly among our nation's youth. The horrifying images confronting us, depicting violence and blatant disrespect, are troubling to say the least. I'm not making any excuses for the behavior of our young people, but I must say that I empathize with the enormous impact the pandemic has had on them. They have spent an extended period outside of the classroom. They have been forced to forgo the usual social interaction that fuels the relationships they build. And they have been frustrated by restrictions that curtail sporting and other activities. As adults, it is important for us to determine how we can possibly influence the lives of the nation's youth, whether through individual or collective actions. We should not be satisfied to simply criticize and condemn. There is an old African saying, it takes a village to raise a child. No more than ever, this Grenadian village must spring into action to save the country's youth. While government is responsible for setting policy measures, the human growth and development we are speaking about here cannot be solved by legislation or edict. It is about nurturing and caring, setting the right examples, and looking out for every child as if they are our own. Our concern for the future should be reflected in the time we take to care for our children today. In terms of the COVID-19 pandemic, we believe that we are at the beginning of the end of this two-year nightmare. We certainly hope so. As indicated by the Ministry of Health days ago, Government has decided to further lift some of the COVID-19 protocols. Effected April 4th, the mass mandate and the testing and vaccination requirement for arriving passengers will be discontinued. My friends, I hasten to add, this does not mean that the dangers are completely behind us. Just take a look at the Omicron variant, which popped up in China in recent weeks. 
In the United States and Europe, thousands are still dying daily from COVID-19. Although other news developments have taken those startling figures away from the headlines. Sisters and brothers, there is still every reason to be cautious and to observe the basic protocols that have kept many of us safe. The mass mandate is being removed, but we must still encourage social distances where possible and frequent sanitizing of hands. Getting vaccinated is still the quickest route to put in this pandemic behind us. Sadly though, vaccine hesitancy is still a grave cause for concern here. Many of our people are still reluctant to accept vaccination as the best shot to safeguard in their lives and that of their loved ones. While current infection rates are down, relatively low level of vaccination makes us susceptible to spikes. Vaccination is key to guarantee the summer we are all excitedly looking forward to. As of now, we are planning a carnival. And if the current health situation does not worsen, we remain on course to have a very good time. Spice Mass Corporation has already unveiled the measures that will be put in place given the current situation to ensure a safe and secure carnival. Our health team has been studying the outcomes from the recent Karaku Carnival, and their observations are encouraging ones. No spikes so far in infections. We therefore will continue to monitor, because we are all aware the pandemic has been dynamic and our response has to be also nimble. We are therefore confident that Grenada will be ready to host not just another carnival, but the Caribbean biggest summer festival in August. Carnival is a significant cultural and economic event, and this government is committed to giving every support to ensuring a grand and successful event. We cannot wait to feel the rhythm of the streets, to watch the smiles on the faces, to sway to the vibrations of our soca artists, and to marvel at the creativity of our mass band producers. And we cannot wait to welcome home not just nationals, but visitors who crave the spectacle of Spice Mask. My friends, in closing, I make a special appeal for unity, for I believe that this is only through a united front that we can adequately address the challenges we face. We are heading into a politically charged period with general elections due within the next year. However, let us not forget the first and foremost. We are all Grenadians, and regardless of the outcome of any general election, we must all come together to build this nation of ours. We are extremely proud of our record, but most importantly, we are excited about the bridge to the future we must build. We have had to steady the nation in the face of the worst pandemic in 100 years. And even amidst this current global uncertainty, we are looking forward to the sun that will rise tomorrow. And as we navigate these treacherous times, we are crafting policies to expand our empowerment agenda. We shall continue to build this nation, not on fear, but on the hope that sustained us through hurricanes and political upheavals. 
We have been knocked down before, but we have never been knocked out. We have always gotten back up on our feet. And by our very nature, we can't sit down. We are resilient. With a challenge, we rise. We shine brighter than before. And with faith in our God as the foundation, we know holes tomorrow. And as stated in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, with quotes, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope, unquote. The great South African Archbishop Desmond Tutu once said, Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. Together, sisters and brothers, we'll meet the challenges of our time as we have done before. Our embrace of tomorrow starts with holding each other's hands today. And amidst all of this, we can say, to God be the glory. I thank you. The preceding was an address to the nation by Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, Prime Minister and Minister for Public Administration, Home Affairs, National Security, Youth Development, Disaster Management, and ICT.